All right, there you have it. The Dow Jones Industrial Average hitting 22,000 for the first time ever. And we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. Jim, another milestone for the market. Underneath, we have a sell-off today. Uh, remember, atavistic uh, index, Apple overweighted. Before that, 40% was Boeing. There's a lot of stocks that are down. Uh, there's not a lot of read through to Apple. I thought there would be for some of these plays like the Skyworks Solutions. We own uh, Broadcom for Action Alerts, and of course we've owned Apple forever. Uh, so we have to be careful today. We've got to get the basis of the sell-off because it's being masked uh, very effectively right now uh, by Apple. Uh, but there are things underneath that I'm concerned about. It does feel like that there's not a lot of read through uh, and that uh, we're seeing uh, some turmoil, and I'm trying to get a feel of it. Well, and, and as you said on Mad Money last night, it's okay for people to take some cash. Yes, I said that, look, uh, you, you got through the spin cycle mm. uh, that so many people came on and said, look, you've got to sell now. I remember one, I'm not going to point out any particular names, let others do that. But it's people who came on air and just said, look, this is the most consequential sell-off and it's really time. And what I'm saying now is you got through the sell-off. So if you were one of these people who was spooked but didn't take action or you felt that you're going to panic next time, you've got the market all the way back. So this is when you want to take action if you do want to sell. And President Trump tweeted yesterday about Dow 22,000. Now that we're here, I mean, how much credit should we give him? I think the deregulation stuff is serious, and it does help the bank stocks. I think that's very real. The number of regulations that were passed under Obama, there are about 25 regulations for every law. And uh, the deregulation has meant a lot mm. for the financials. Uh, the other um, hopes, I think, for tax reform, I know that they expect something this year. I don't. Uh, but there is a notion, I think, of a more pro-capital. He's meeting with business people almost every day. There is a sense that uh, you're, you're a bit freed up from the notion of a president who felt, I, to some degree, that stocks were the province of only the rich. Uh, I do think that periodically when Trump embraces the market, he should embrace it more wholeheartedly from the point of view of individuals coming in and buying stocks. I know that he's going, if you should get a little more granular, because I think that there is more of a sense of hope, even as there's now a sense of a bit of futility post the inability to repeal and replace. Uh, and, and so we want to stay focused on Trump, but it's the deregulations, what he can do, and that has helped financials, to some degree oils, uh, although the oil companies obviously are now being challenged out of what we saw Pioneer. All right, Apple driving the Dow, you alluded to that earlier. What did you make of Apple's quarter? Okay, Apple is really a triumph of iPad and service. Mm. Service now double digit, service the size of a Fortune 100 company, which means it comes in around 28. But the growth of, of service, 22% growth, will make it so that you could put, start putting numbers on that service stream. I've been waiting for that to happen. It's accelerated, even though it had Pokemon Go last time, which was a very big user. They're talking about, remember, they're talking about augmented reality. That's also going to drive a lot of what I think is going to be service revenue. If you uh, play for iCloud backup, as I do service revenue, uh, music service revenue, 180 million people, 20 million came in additional for service revenue just this quarter alone. A service revenue renewable stream where you just pay Apple endlessly is what's going to get at a higher price earnings multiple. The iPad, I think, is directly related to the shift of time, architectonic shift of time toward Netflix, not going to the movies. I have a piece this morning in Real Money about the AMC versus the experiential Royal Caribbean versus the uh, Netflix era and how much fang, and there I am talking Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, really Alphabet, and there I'm focused on YouTube, have become the time uh, of how you spend. Uh, you could make it fang and put Activision in there, by the way. What did you make of uh, AMC's results? I mean, well, not I just I mean, again, AMC is a problem with a uh, Buster Cohen has done unbelievable stuff for the street. If you want to check the granularity of why movies are not moving this year, now there is Star Wars coming up, so maybe there's a return. But uh, I know that AMC basically. Uh, kind of uh, uh, added and added, and it looks like that the EBITDA went down anyway. It should have gone up. Uh, I do think that this 4% decline plus in American box office is a stunner, and you have to take a look at that and say, 
what are people doing with their time? And I think they're watching on an iPad, mm -hmm. or they're watching on with the $200 model in particular, which is blowout, the double digit for iPad, first time in a long time that's back. And they're watching on the Plus, which is a form factor that a lot of people feel very comfortable with. I referenced there the uh, ATT call mm -hmm. and the need to have Time Warner because HBO can be watched. That's my derivative. You know, you can watch the NFL. You watch HBO on a, on a Plus format. It is working well. I think that the no Notion of the 70-inch TV, interesting enough, Rich Fain, F-A-I-N, on the Royal Caribbean call, talked about people not buying TVs, talked about people not buying cars, talking about people creating memories and moments, experiential, on his cruises. Boy, the numbers are great there. Then they put that on Facebook. This is my derivation. And then once it's on Inst you know, Facebook, Instagram, then people then watch it. Which two billion people are doing this process. Uh, a lot of people watching YouTube, internet TV is taking over for the actual TV. So Jim, when was the last time you went to a movie? <laughs> I, I, I can't recall. Mm. Uh, I can't recall when I last went to the movies. Might have been Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, but I am uh, a multi-watching uh, uh, series. I just started Ozark. I put to bed, trying to put to bed House of Cards at the same time. And, uh, I can't, but I got to get these done before Stranger Things starts because I can't have so, binge so much at once. I've never thought that I want a rainy day on a weekend, but it's my, my chance to catch up with Reed Hastings, whom I love. Again, Buster Cohen with a fabulous article to finally gets Netflix to speak about what they're doing. I reference thestreet.com. For sure. Okay, Jim, let's move on to Mondelez CEO Irene Rosenfeld stepping okay, down. Okay, now, I, I look, a bit of a shock because I had Ms. Rosenfeld on Mad Money not that long ago, and she just finished her five-year plan, the gross margin she's uh, created a monster there in terms of gross margins, which is why the company can make so much money on one percent organic growth. That's all they have. But believe it or not, when you're when you're in uh, the food business, one percent is pretty good. Snacking category growing faster than others. Fastest growing snacking part is uh, is PepsiCo and the and Frito Lay. There's a lot of takeaways here, but one of the key takeaways is I think you need to see even more consolidation. By the way, she did say that the daily uh, daily delivery to stores, the so-called DSD, David Faber asked her about, is really a game uh, winner for Mondelez, which therefore it's a game loser for Kellogg, which stopped that. Uh, now, uh, in the consolidation of food theory, I, none of these companies wants to be acquired, but we know that Amazon coming in big with Whole Foods is going to change the dynamic dynamic of what these food companies can charge for those that are in the natural and organic section. Were you surprised by how much the cyber attack impacted Mondelez's results? Uh, yeah, and I came back and uh, told David during the break, I said, this is the first time you really have, other than the obviously the, the Target and Home Depot, this is the first time where they came in at the end of a quarter and destroyed a quarter. Uh, I don't think you're going to get that. I know Irene said that they're going to get some of those revenues back, but I know from PepsiCo that July 4th is a gigantic snacking holiday, and they were not able to get it for July 4th. This was obviously a uh, financially vicious hack, and I think that it's going to once again cause board members to say, what are we doing here? But the answer is, is that the bad guys are always one step ahead of the posse, even as the good guys tell you that they have it solved. All right, Jim, moving on, on your stop trading segment, you talked about FMC. FMC is uh, all about lithium. It's a remarkable story. We know that lithium's used in uh, batteries for the next generation. Uh, FMC has a huge amount of it. They're gonna spin off the lithium. FMC got a fantastic uh, break from the government when Dow and DuPont were merging. They had to get rid of du some of DuPont's best seed properties. Those went to FMC. This is a $100 stock. All right, and then we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. We have Yum Brands reporting. You know, Yum is, I think, uh, it's interesting, Papa John's was good domestically and Domino's was good domestically. I want to see if they've, if they've really managed to fix uh, pizza. And I think ta you know, ta Taco Bell is, is the standout story there. Uh, the recent incident again with Chipotle, a setback for Chipotle. Uh, I like Yum. I, I'm not jumping up and down to buy it. Uh, but, but there again, Quix QSR had a good quarter. McDonald's had a good quarter. They had, remember, they had 6.6 .6 worldwide. And don't forget, Yum Brands is everything but China, mm -hmm. um, which makes it pretty fascinating to me. Obviously, Yum China, I think, is a little more challenged. Uh, but I think that this is a, a very well-run company. Uh, the food, that whole restaurant group's been under a little bit of pressure. I'm going back after Texas Roadhouse, uh, encircling and thinking that Darden could be a buy down here big. All right, Jim Kramer, great analysis as always. Thank you so thank much. You. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.